This is Clemente Aguirre, who was sentenced to death for a double murder he did not commit in Altamont Springs, Florida. I do know that nobody believed me back then. No one. Beside my mother, nobody believed me. Nearly 14 years ago, Aguirre lived just a few doors down when a mother and daughter were killed. Soon, Aguirre became the prime suspect. Reportedly, he went to the woman's house that night asking for beer, and here he found the dead bodies. He tried to revive the woman but then panicked and ran home. He stated he didn't call the police because he was an illegal immigrant from Honduras and feared deportation. Aguirre was arrested and later convicted on two counts of first degree murder and given the death sentence. I didn't, I didn't do it. I don't kill nobody. After Aguirre was escorted out of the courtroom, it wouldn't be until nine years later evidence showed that the DNA might have been misrepresented. So Aguirre's lawyers filed for more testing. It turns out that all of Aguirre's DNA samples matched his testimony, meaning that his DNA on the scene matched with him trying to save the victims. After 14 years behind bars, 11 of which on death row, all charges against Aguirre are dropped and he thanks the court. And I thank you for it. From the bottom of my heart. As he hugs his team and family, he is now walking out a free man. Reportedly, Aguirre is owed $720,000 from the state for the wrongful conviction. However, state lawyers are fighting against it, and so far, he hasn't received anything. His immigration status is also ongoing. This is Deborah Melke. She was sentenced to death and spent 22 years on death row for a crime she did not commit in Phoenix, Arizona. My innocence did not matter in their pursuit of a conviction. Melky's four-year-old son was found dead in a desert, being shot three times. Melky was questioned by Detective Armando Saldate Jr., which was not recorded or reported at all. He claimed that Melky admitted to arranging the murder. She then decided that it'd be best for Christopher Melky to die. She was then charged with first-degree murder despite no actual record of her admitting to the crime. The state determined she had masterminded the shooting and she was sentenced to death. Over 20 years later, questions started to get asked regarding Melky's confession to Detective Salde, which Melky still denies ever giving. I had absolutely nothing to do with the brutal murder of my son Christopher, and I did not give a confession to Mr. Saldate. Reportedly, the court found that Detective Saldate had a long list of lying under oath and violating individual rights while interrogating. Melky's alleged confession was the only direct evidence linking her to the crime. And finally, 24 years after the arrest and facing the death sentence, her conviction gets overturned. Listen as she shares her thoughts for the wrongful conviction. Losing a child to murder is a devastating tragedy. Being falsely accused of a crime you didn't commit is also a devastating tragedy. Try to imagine that. What happened to me could happen to any one of you. Milky now walks out a free woman. There are no reports of Milky receiving any compensation. This is Clifford Williams. He was sentenced to death and spent 43 years behind bars for crimes he did not commit in Jacksonville, Florida. I just wanted to get out and be with, be with my see, kids. They were gone and it wasn't no battle but them. Williams was 34 and his 18-year-old nephew, Nathan Myers, were suspects in a murder and attempted murder. The survivor of the shooting claimed that she had been shot by the uncle and nephew, identifying them both by name. Despite having solid alibis, Williams and Myers were both arrested and charged within hours. No physical or DNA evidence pinned the two men to this crime, yet both men were found guilty. Williams was sentenced to death and Myers was given a life sentence. It wasn't until 43 years later, while they were in prison, there was a new investigation on the scene, proving that the ballistic reports from the crime lab didn't match the original testimony, and it was the only evidence pinning the men to this crime. And now, this is the moment that Williams and Myers have been waiting for for 43 years. Mr. Williams and Mr. Myers, the indictments have been dismissed against you. You are free to go, and we are adjourned. After they hear that they are free, they hug each other and their team. <laughs> Williams and Myers both received $2 million in state compensation. 
This is Eric Kelly, who was sentenced to life in prison for a robbery and murder he did not commit in Passaic County, New Jersey. Kelly was 28 when he was taken into custody after a man was killed working at a video store. Kelly suffered a tragic brain injury, making him suffer a cognitive disability, and he had trouble processing information from detectives and allegedly admitted to the crime, even though he had not done it. Despite no physical evidence, he was convicted and put in prison. It wouldn't be until 24 years later the case was reopened and major advancements in DNA testing proved that Kelly was not at the crime scene. Therefore, in light of the foregoing reasons, the motion for a new trial is hereby granted. A new trial was granted and Kelly is now outside of prison for the first time in almost a quarter century, still with the fear he might go back. Mainly I want to eat. <laughs> I'm a little hungry. Um, my legal team, I want to thank them. I want to thank my family. I just want to get back to like actually living for once. Surprisingly, the prosecution later dismissed all pending charges against him. Kelly reportedly received $1 million in state compensation. This is Robert Springsteen, who spent nine years in prison and was sentenced to death for crimes he allegedly did not commit in Austin, Texas. Springsteen was 17 at the time, and three friends were believed to be prime suspects in the killings of four teenage girls at a yogurt shop. One of the boys was caught carrying a 22 caliber gun at the mall, as it was the same weapon used in the killings. The boys were set free after no link was found, but seven years later, one of the friends was interrogated. And begun to give up information saying that the 22 caliber gun used to belong to Springsteen. But this is one of the most significant things that ever happened in your That's life. That's what I keep trying to explain to you. If I was there and I partook in this, I would remember these things. And you do remember these things. No, I don't. He was arrested, then later convicted and sentenced to death. Springsteen's conviction was later overturned based on an unfair trial. While waiting for a retrial, lawyers requested further DNA evidence to be analyzed from the original crime scene. Even though it had been 17 years, the analysts concluded that no DNA was found of Springsteen and his three friends. Now, Springsteen is back in court. Second defendant, Robert Springsteen's case is being called this afternoon. Additionally, four pending capital murder and diamonds. And all charges are now dismissed. The court has signed these dismissals in each of the charges against these two defendants, Michael Scott and Robert Springsteen. Springsteen sits silently as he hears that he is now a free man. Springsteen spent nine years in prison, but his overturned conviction was not granted based on actual innocence, which makes him not eligible for a payout. This is Curtis Flowers, who was wrongfully imprisoned for 23 years and set to the death penalty for a quadruple murder he reportedly never committed in Winona, Mississippi. Flowers was 26 years old when he was fired from working at a furniture store. Two weeks later, the owner of the same store and three employees were all found dead inside. In no time, Flowers became a suspect and was later arrested and charged with the murder of all four victims. Over six different trials, all all for the same crime, the final verdict resulted in guilty and Flowers was sentenced to death. Investigators started looking into the jury selection, and reportedly the prosecution had racially discriminated during the selection of jurors across all six trials. This reached the US Supreme Court, and it was voted to throw the case based on the prosecutor had purposefully dismissed African American jurors from the trial. The judge granted Flowers bail, and he is now getting put on house arrest. The only times that Mr. Flowers is allowed to be away from the location where he will be residing is if he's receiving medical treatment, attending meetings with his attorney and now in 23 years this is the first time flowers is outside of prison oh i don't know i'm so i'm so excited right now. I can't. Thank, you. thank you all very much thank you all thank you all a year later, the state denied to put Flowers back on trial and officially dropped all charges. The state of Mississippi announced that it will pay Flowers $500,000 for his 23 years of wrongful imprisonment. 
This is Kimberly Long, who was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison for a murder she never committed in Riverside, California. Long arrived home and discovered her boyfriend dead. She immediately called 911. Despite being the person who found the dead body, Long ended up becoming the lead suspect. She was soon convicted of second degree murder and sent to prison. But seven years later, forensic evidence showed that her boyfriend died long before she had arrived at the scene, and there was DNA of an unknown male at the crime scene. The conviction now gets overturned. The judgment of conviction is vacated and a new trial will be ordered. <laughs> Long is now outside of prison. The prosecution soon dropped all existing charges. I feel um, happy, elated, relieved, um, just a lot of emotions right now. Long reportedly received $386,000 from the California Victim Compensation Fund. 